Hi guys, Nigel here again. How are you all doing? Um, I just thought I'd put together a very, very quick video because I've just got back from a brilliant show, that being the IPMS Avon show, which is held at Thornridge, just outside Bristol, just north of Bristol. And um, yeah, for me, it's one of the best shows of the year. It's huge. They have wargaming there. They have some fantastic trade stands. They have some fantastic club stands and they have very big tables and it's a big open space. It's not all compact and it's light and there's nothing bad about it. Um, there was one thing bad about it today, sticky and muggy. Oh my God, here in this area, South Gloucestershire, Gloucestershire, it's it's um, real heavy and sticky, you know, the, the, the thick cloud and you know, it's just like it wants to have a massive thunderstorm and clear itself and I wish it bloody would. Um, so yeah, it was a really, really good show. And uh, I'm really busy at the moment. I have the, the, the Hellcat fuselages together, as you can see there. Um, that's all glued and I'm working on the seams now. I've been asked to do a Mr. Surfacer video, which I'm doing. And that's a quick preview. That's uh, coming together nicely and that's showing you how to use all different Mr. Surfacers and, and what they all do and, and what they all mean and how long they last and how and where to use them and everything. So uh, yeah, really enjoying that. I'm also doing a video on curing the, the rough texture on the Airfix plastic. Um, I've also heard some people saying they think the stress metal effect on this kit is over the top. Um, what I would say to those people is, for God's sake, you know, a company brings out kits. It's it's a, this is the second or third kit ever to have this stressed effect on it. And you know, don't moan, guys. Just if it's a bit over the top, just sand it down. You know, it's it's not. The thing is, the stress metal is raised between the rivets, so you can sand it down. You can lessen it. You could take it back to completely flat if you want to. But um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's marvelous. I think Airfix have done a wonderful job, and they should com be commended for it, not criticised. Um, but this, uh, yeah, the, 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 what I don't like is, and, it, and I know what it is, is because of the way the, the moulds are produced, they're EDM'd I think, and um, basically it gets this kind of rough finish, it's not like a polished finish like you used to get on old Hasegawa kits, and that's fine if you're doing the FEA version, but if you're doing the, the US Navy version in the glossy blue, um, it doesn't look very good on that sort of mottled finish so what I'm doing is some experimenting here on this spare wing and seeing what I can do to to get it smooth so the gloss coat goes on glossy I'm gonna dull mine down I'm not gonna fade it because apparently it didn't fade but I am gonna I'm not gonna have it gleaming and glossy I'm gonna dull it down a bit because remember this aircraft is not that weathered my FAA one's gonna be beat to hell so uh, yeah and in the middle of that I'm also doing a video about the different drop tanks so um yeah all very very short stuff so when I was at the show today I spoke to the guys on the B-52 stand and uh, B-52s were in the um, American Air Force SIG and oh, they had about I think there was about seven B-52s there and I think all but one of them were fully built with the wings fixed only one had the wings detachable which was incredible fair play guys you know for storing them and transporting them and stuff and bringing them to the show really really good it was really really good I had a very very long chat with them and um, we also got in this great big long chat about the model collect b52 and its faults and, and favors and all this that and the other and one of the guys there had just bought a, a b52g the um, broken arrow version and he asked me to go through the kit and show him what I thought was right and what was wrong with it so of course it inspired me and I went and bought this because it was cheap. Um, one of the guys at the stands does me some fantastic deals on kits and uh, yeah absolutely um, brilliant mainly mainly military models is called and uh, MMM and his name's um, his name's Phil brilliant bloke up in Birmingham he's got um, a YouTube website a YouTube eBay eBay um, shop as well and uh, yeah does a fa some fantastic deals and if you ask him for a deal he'll normally do it for you um, so yeah, that inspired me to buy that. I also got myself, finally, yay, Micro Crystal Clear. We can try that out and see what we think. I, Phil Flory thinks it's absolutely amazing. So it must be really, if he thinks it's amazing, it must be at least really good. So um, so yeah, and also there were some guys there with the, with the stand. I didn't get the name of the club, unfortunately, but they had a beautiful stand with all these Russian aircraft. I got some pictures. If I think of it, I'll put them up now. Um, Here's, here, I'm not even going to try and tell you what the aircraft were because I don't know, but they're beautiful and really unusual. And this thing here with the funny shaped wings and everything, really, really nice. 
but it inspired me. I saw the trucks and I thought they look just so, so fantastic and it gives you such a fantastic um, scale for the aircraft. So I was running around the show trying to find some, some trucks and I, I found this. This is a Trumpeter Russian Zill 157 and um, you can see it's a tiny little box, nothing much to it. And uh, yeah, that was £8.50 and uh, on the same stand there was this one here. For 9.99, I thought that'd be great to put alongside a B52. So I said to the guy, "What were you doing these for?" He said, uh, "11 quid." Okay, <laughs> so a bit of hand off. 9.99 and 8 pound 50 discounted comes to 11 pounds. So I was really, really happy with that. So thank you very much. Um, so yeah, that's about that. Really, that's all I wanted to talk about. And one other thing was the um, oh, there is one other thing. The uh, I'm thinking about getting a camera. Um, the money's getting close to now, you know, to the £400 sort of thing. And I'm thinking about getting the um, the Canon M50. Please let me know your thoughts. I was looking at the M100, but apparently it doesn't have an external um, phone jack for a mic. So I'm not going to bother with that one. So I'm um, looking at the M50. It's, it's what I need. It's lightweight. It's got a fantastic zoom on it. It's really, really fast automatic zoom and everything. So thinking about that. So let me know if, if you're photographic guys out there please let me know um, and one other thing I when I was chatting to these guys today I was telling them to come onto this channel and look at my videos and it's reminded me about I don't know six weeks two months ago I did a video on how to um, do the canning on the side of a b52 I saw Phil Florey do it on his side and I thought what if I could do that a bit different let's have a go so I got a Revell b52 two pair of fuselage halves and I practiced and practiced and then on the other one I've done a video on this is how I've done it and um, so I'm gonna put that video up I think in a minute because I know I've got it there I've not I've not even edited edited it I saved it I'm not edited it so I'm gonna be putting that up as well so um anyway there we go that was uh, just a quick update on what I've been doing today bye bye <laughs>